Hey rockers, I'm glad you're here, man. And uh, gonna take you back to the year 1975. First of all, I hope you're all having a good kickoff to the weekend. And thanks for all the great new subscribers and all the great comments you guys have been leaving. If you would be so inclined, please give this channel a like and maybe subscribe and leave a comment. So back to 75. Yeah, man, I'm nine years old. Uh, I'm living in Peoria, Illinois at well, what would became Candle Tree Apartments. I can't remember what it was called originally, but we lived there for, you know, uh, at least five years. And I'm nine years old. It's 1975. I'm out playing in the creek, which was a big creek that ran through the apartment complex that we lived in. We had tree houses. We had like little forts built in different parts of the woods. This creek was awesome. You could go down the side of this like hill and you were down in a creek and there was another side that came up. In the winter time, we would sled down these hills. It was just amazing. When tornadoes came, which did happen occasionally, everyone in the apartment complex would hightail it down to the creek and everybody would be down there with their pets and, you know, hiding out. It was crazy. I remember one tornado where I'm like holding guinea pigs and like stuff that I owned because the tornado was like, you know, five feet from our apartment. It never hit it though, thank goodness. So I'm down in that very creek with some friends. And while we were down hanging out by the creek, um, one of my friends found a thing that looked like a stick of dynamite. Now, all kinds of weird stuff happened back in the 70s because kids were like set out to play and were out all day long and there was never anybody checking on them until they came in when the you know street lights came on or whatever. Or in my case, when my mom whistled, she had the loudest whistle in the land. She, that lady could be anywhere and I would hear that whistle every time. And all she'd have to do is whistle and I would come home for dinner or come in for the night. Well, on this day, my buddy found what looked like a stick of dynamite, but what it was was a trucker's flare. Now a trucker's flare looks like a stick of dynamite basically and you light it if there's an emergency on the side of the road and you put these out on the road to warn drivers, hey, there's an accident or there's some reason this truck's pulled over or an, an emergency. Well, my buddies lit this thing and so we had this trucker's flare that we're holding and it's just like throwing out flames because these things like throw out these massive flames that are meant to be seen from the road and from a distance. Three or four of us. I think there's three of us. We're down in the creek. My buddy's holding the trucker's flare. People are like looking down. Other kids are walking by and they're like, what are these kids up to? What's in their hand? That's not no firecracker. And so this was crazy even holding this thing. But my friend was. We were on the right hand side of the creek. The water was going down the middle and everything was fine. We were walking along. I don't know what our intention was, but we were going to hang out in the creek and do whatever. Well, for some weird reason, I jumped over the water and basically I landed on what I thought was the other side. And it was, but within about 15 seconds, I'm going to guess, 10 seconds, maybe 30 seconds at most. I'm nine years old, so I'm, I'm reaching back. But remember, this is a traumatic experience for me, man. So I remember it pretty vividly. I tend to remember the traumatic, really traumatic stuff in my life in pretty much detail. Even if I was like blackout drunk, I'll remember stuff that was really, really traumatic a lot, often. Not every time. Um, definitely, maybe 25% of the time when, I'm, it, when I used to drink back in the day. Uh, well, this is, gets horrific now. All of a sudden, when I jump over that water, I start feeling, ow, and ow, and then I start seeing bees. Yep, like the little yellow hornet bees, the kind that you don't want to get stung by. And the next thing you know, my friends are like, hey, and they start running. Like, they see what's going on, and they're like, they're like out of there, man. They got the heck out of Dodge. They climbed the other side of the creek, and we're out of there. Not me. When I jumped over that freaking water, I jumped into a literal hornet's nest. I didn't see it. I didn't know it was happening until it happened. And oh my God, talk about one of the most painful experiences of my freaking life. That day was one of them, folks. Man, I was quickly covered in bees from head to toe, hornets, bees, whatever, and they were stinging me all over, and it was just excruciating. And I was nine, a little kid. I was freaking crying and screaming, and just I couldn't get them off me. And the more I tried to combat them, the more violent and stingy they got. They were on my legs. They were on my calves. You know, they were, I had tennis shoes on, so my feet were protected. But they were on my chest. They were on my face. Everywhere. 
it was a nightmare. And all I could think of was, I got to get home and probably going to have to go to a hospital. This is not good. And I'm screaming and crying and I'm completely flick, flipping out badly. And I'm covered in maybe a few dozen bees and they're all around me and are coming down on me. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So the next thing I know, I cross over the creek. I start running towards home. I dropped to my knees. The pain was killing me. And then I found out later that I could have died easy. I ended up crawling from that creek all the way to one, two, it was like two apartment buildings away. And it was like across a playground to the first building. And then there was another building. And we lived on the third floor of that apartment building, man. And that sucked. I remember trying to open the door and I was in such pain I could barely get it open. And I'm crawling up the steps and there's bees all over me and they're finally dying. I think they actually die once they sting you, don't they? But either way, they were dropping off finally. But I was in such pain and agony and I was just weeping. I finally get up to the uh, third floor and I start knocking and banging on the door and I'm screaming, Mom, I'm just like out of it. And my poor mother, who was a very worrying kind of person anyway and just would freak out at stuff like that. Um, all of a sudden, she opens the door and she just starts freaking screaming. And I'm like, I was stung by bees. I just tell her the whole deal. And she quickly gets me up. Fills up a bathtub, fills it full of um, baking soda, baking powder, baking soda, yeah, like you put in your fridge, like Arm & Hammer, that stuff, the little yellow box. She starts dumping it. I don't know where, how much she had, but she starts dumping it in water, puts me in it because she must have known that that does something to help you. I don't know. I haven't done the research on what that does. But within minutes, she was on the phone to the hospital, and they're like, you got to bring that kid here now. He could die. There's, a, there's reasons why. I mean, you get stung by, you know, dozens and dozens of hornets. You're pretty much possibly screwed. I got down to the hospital in record time. Thank goodness for my mom. And uh, they gave me a bunch of shots. That's what I remember. And that just sucked. So I go from getting stung by the dozens of bees to, like, shot after shot after shot. And it was a nightmare, man. And I remember having to have follow-up shots. Like, I went through poison ivy, poison oak, poison sumac, getting shots for all that stuff, too, later. But these bees were a horrifying event for me. And, uh, you know, for the very few of you that are sadistic and laughing at me, ha-ha. <laughs> Be nice. Anyway, man, it was a horrifying experience. That would have been would have been one of the little chapters in my book had I been writing a book, but I'm doing these stories instead. So uh, finally, I went home and all was well, and I recuperated. Obviously, I didn't die from the bees. And uh, all I can say is for years and years and years, every time I even got near a bee, I would just freak out. And people would say, why are you so afraid of a bee? Anyway, man, I'll be back with some more rock and roll tales real soon. It's pretty late here in Southern Oregon, and my dog's over there making noise. Listen. She's mad because I'm not giving her attention. Yeah, Jet Dog is a complete attention horror. She always wants me to pay attention to her, that dog. But she's extremely intelligent. Hey, man, thanks for being here. Subscribe if you like. I wish you would. Give it a like and a comment, and I'll catch you on the next go-round. Rock and roll, stay real, and have a good weekend. Cheers.